variable. Why? Because that one is defining a map from sample space omega to omega y. If y is a function of random variable x. So this uh, uh, convention we had all this in that. That means here we are having a function of random variable, a random variable x which is defined from omega to omega x and I am just uh, leaving the inverse uh, image criteria of Borel set uh, that, that means it, uh, every Borel set in uh, omega x is pulls back to an event in uh, omega. So that I had explained you know and omega x is a discrete random variable so in simple we will write omega x is a discrete set that means it is a countable set that means uh, it is a sequence of random numbers. Why random numbers? Because omega happens to be random and those are mapped to uh, these numbers so that's why uh, it is also carrying carrying randomness so random numbers x k's are ran, not uh, deterministic number these are random number so if you are saying that these are random number you have to uh, you have to uh, compute those randomness so and next i had discussed that we are defining y as a function of x so we are saying that y is a cap capital letter as a function of x so we are calling it g of x g is a function of x okay so here in the first you had seen x is a x is a map x is a function then we are defining g is function of x so function of function that means composition of function so in short you can write it g composition notation is a small circle and x so this one is composition of this one and if you say how it is acting upon omega so that's where it is a map from omega to where it will go what will be the range anyone what would be the range omega y it would be there. not omega x it would be omega y so if omega x is a discrete set omega y would be also a discrete set it would be also discrete set and we will put here omega x in the form of sequence and we call sequence of random number yk or yj other suffix you can give it so you can call it like that. the action is how it is happening action means are you getting meaning i think action word might be clear to everyone it is acting upon that that means it is acting that that means a square root a square root of real number what does it mean a square root is acting upon uh, non-negative real number we can't find uh, real things from uh, non-negative negative of uh, does it negative of a square defined not it is not defined complex thing will come there so that's where so here action is happening like that so y of omega that means a small omega it is an outcome it is defined as uh, via this composition function g of x of small omega x of a small omega it would be a real number and if i ask what are the random things here you observe in this mapping g is not random it is a deterministic function like x square like x cube a square root modulus of x that kind of things would be so there is no randomness in g it is deterministic in nature x is also the as a map having no randomness it is deterministic in nature 
which one is having randomness omega is having randomness so the corresponding number will have observed number will have randomness so it is so uh, we, that's why we say that capital y is not a random quantity it is a random variable it is a map transforming omega random outcome to random number so this small y is random in nature a small x is random in nature and omega is random in nature are you getting meaning of all this so this uh, everyone might have already got so i had already discussed uh, these things so i will go to discuss few more example and before that we need to know how to compute uh, probability mass function of y probability mass function of x would be given to you now by using that you have to compute probability mass function of y so this uh, y is what it is a function of a function of x and we had already seen this one this i explain now next task is to compute probability mass function of y that means a small p of y and this suffix capital y is coming in order to say that we are talking about probability mass function of the random variable y and y we are deriving from a given random variable x so that's why y is what y we will call it derived random variable are you getting meaning of derived or not so we are deriving so actually we are having li limited number of discrete random variable and from there we try to enlarge random variable so we need to go for derivation so here this we call it derived random variable in short i will write it derived x is a discrete random variable so you can call it derived discrete random variable Des derived discrete random variable you will call it and the corresponding probability mass function what we will call it we will call it derived probability mass function so d p m f d p m f derived probability mass function for y okay now as per previous convention i have told that probability mass function at y it is just one observation it is defined as probability that the derived random variable is observing a value a small y okay when we say a small y it is fixed we can't do anything there that means when we say that we got head we can't change the outcome it is head it will be once you toss a coin you you have seen that it is a head you can't change that it is fixed so that kind of things before tossing you can't say what will come but after seeing the toss you can say that uh, that one is fixed so like way why you have already observed okay and a small y a capital y is random derived random variable so capital y is written in term of g of x so we'll write it like this way the the probability that y is observing value a small y it is equal to that probability that g of x is observing value a small y that means we have to look back uh, all those x which are mapped to y and we will compute probability value for all those x and sum it up and that will give the probability of observing y okay in the map i had already told this as well so if you are saying like that uh, that you got derived probability mass function then being a probability mass function it has to satisfy all three properties of being a probability mass function what are those that the probability mass function will take value between 0 and 1 the first property is very much uh, conventionally in last class i had told that i think this derivation i had told this also i have done this one so i will go to talk about example like everyone might be comfortable with uh, dice if you are uh, rolling a dice you will say that it will have how many faces six faces you can give name to those faces 1 2 3 4 5 6 now someone will come there and say that no i want to go with those faces i will change the label of those faces in place of 1 uh, uh, he will put 0 in place of 2 he will put 0 in place of 3 he will put 1 in place of 3 uh, 4 he will put 1 in place of 5 uh, he will put 2 in place of 
six you will put two. But what scenario? Then dice is same, level is same. What does it mean? That means one random variable you have defined when you are rolling a dice, that one is face. Face. Uh, number on the face. That one is one random variable. And in that case, x is taking uh, six possible value. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, once you come up with idea that you have changed the label uh, that one, two has been mapped, changed to zero, uh, three, four has been changed to one, five, six has been changed to two. Then what? Whether the distribution would be same? Whether distribution would be same or different? The new distribution, because with respect to label, labeling means you are doing one kind of uh, uh, function of the previous random variable, defining function of previous random variable. So oh, here we have to find all possible value. So why is the label? So this number, so simply we say that uh, here x is defined from x you call number on the face. Number we denote it by hash on the face on the face on the face of dice when you are rolling so x will take 6 value 1 2 3 4 5 6 and y is coming with this y is a function of x you say that y is coming with respect to uh, labeling y is labeling one kind of function so y is some function of x or g of x we can call it so if you talk about what are the possible value of y y will take 0 when x is 1 y will take 0 when x is 2 y will take 1 when x is 3 y will take 1 when x is 4 y will take 2 when x is 5 y will take uh, 2 when x is 6 so this kind of mapping you observe 1 2 3 4 5 This one is the, these are the value of x, so this would be in the omega x. And actually omega equal to omega x in this example. And y is having value 0, 1, 2. So these are mapped to 0, 3, 4 are mapped to 1. 5, 6 are mapped to, so this kind of thing. So this one is coming in omega y through new level. So we will compute a probability mass function of y. What would be probability mass function of y? So first observe value of y is 0. So that means uh, value of probability when y is equal to 0 y equal to 0. So what would be this? It is it is summation of all those x for which uh, those are mapped to 0. So what are mapped to 0? 1 and 2. What is the probability of 1? 1 by 6. What is the probability of 2? 1 by 6. So probability of y equal to 0 is 1 by 3. Likewise, what, what is the probability of y equal to 1? Probability of y equal to 1. What is that? That would be also 1 by 3 and probability of y equal to 2 that would be also uh, 1 by 3. Okay, so this is the way of defining a function of a random variable. That means sometimes face labeling, sometimes other kind of things. So here this uh, plot you can see it like that. Uh, 1, 2 has been mapped to 0 and the, that several times I have already explained. I will take another example. So take uniform discrete random variable and now define function of that random variable as modulus of x. So if you are taking model, so uniform random variable, you say when you say uniform random variable, 
then each value of the random variable is having the same probability of observation. Each re re random number is having same probability of uh, observation. Then if you are defining a modulus, probability will change. It will be no more uniform. So here uh, y is modulus of x. Y is defined as a modulus of x. X is a uh, uniform discrete random variable. If you are saying uniform discrete random variable, that one is observing value uh, from integer minus 4 to 4. How many integers would be there from minus 4 to 4? How many integers? 9 integers would be there. So if you say uniform, that means what is the probability mass function of each uh, random variable? 1 by 9, because it is equally likely, uniform. So 1 by, so probability mass function is constant. It is 1 by 9. Okay. Now, we are willing to find value of uh, probability mass function of y. So first we have to know what are the value that y is observing. The first step, what are the value that y is observing. So if x is observing value from integers from minus 4 to 4, and if you do modulus, then what, then you will get y. Then y will, what kind of value y will observe? 0 to 4. Zero to four. Okay. So the possible observation of y happens to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the possible observation of y. Okay. Once you know that what value y is observing, you will compute probability for each those value. Okay. So what is the probability of y at 0? So you will replace y by modulus of x. So see the here concept. So probability that modulus of x, capital X is coming here. Modulus of x equal to 0 m means we are looking all those x whose modulus are 0. Zero. What are number whose modulus would be zero? Only one number. X equal to zero will have modulus zero. So that's why this would be what probability that X is equal to zero. And what is the probability of X equal to zero? It is one by nine. So we got probability of Y equal to zero. That one is one by nine. Now, if you are willing to find probability of non-zero uh, observed value of Y, then you will write that probability that Y is observing value a small Y, and Y is what? It is equal to modulus of capital X. So tell me, what are the uh, numbers which are mapped to y? y and minus y. Under the modulus function, y and minus y both will map to y. So that's why, what are the inverse images of y? Minus y and y. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Everyone, uh, did you did you get the meaning of this one? That what is the inverse image of y? That means what is the uh, what are the value of x which has been mapped to y? What are the value of x which has been mapped to y? When y is non-zero, I am talking about. Uh, what are the value when y is a small y is the fixed number now? When you say a small, so what are the real number? Uh, what are the integers uh, among minus four to between minus four to four? Uh, if you are coming with this uh, situation, that what are the integers which are mapped to y, minus y and y. If you solve, just solve this inequality, equality, solve this equality. Modulus of x equal to y, and x is variable, not y is variable, y is fixed. So what would be that? One case x would be minus y, another case x would be plus y. So that, that kind of things. Are you getting meaning of modulus, or definition of modulus? So that's where you are saying that here x would be either minus y or y. Uh, both will, modulus of both would be y. Means we computing probability of probability of y when observing a small y, it is just e equivalent to say that probability that x is observing value y or x is observing value minus y. And what about y and minus y? Whether both are same or mutually exclusive? Whether both are same or mutually exclusive? y and minus y? Both are mutually exclusive. There is no commonness. Mutually exclusive. So, uh, as per that uh, property of probability measure, third property of probability measure, so this probability will be sum of these two probability. And uh, tell me, what is the probability of x equal to y? What is the probability of x equal to y? 1 by 9. What is the probability of x equal to minus y? 1 by 9. So, what is the probability of y equal to a small y? 2 by 9, where a small y would be any uh, non-zero number from here. That means it may be 1, 2, 3 or 4. So what we observe here, uh, x is having uniform uh, 
distribution. That means height of the protein mass function is same everywhere. For each value height, height is denoting protein, protein. Okay. So each value protein is having same in X. But when we are defining a modulus, a function of a random variable, uh, y equal to modulus of x, it is no more uniform. It is no more. So y is having different distribution. It is not same. So when you are defining function of a random variable, distribution will change. Distribution is changing. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Now, another example, I will take it simplest one, a square of a uniform random variable. Okay. So x square. So x square is again another function of random variable x and x is again uniformly distributed from minus 2 to 2. So what would be the protein mass function? It would be 1 by 5. How many number integers you observe minus between minus 2 to 2? 5. Under the uniform law, it will have protein mass function 1 by 5. So you have to compute the protein mass function of y. So first you again, a step 1 is that you have to count what are the value y is observing. So what, what are the value y will observe? X is observing value minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Then y will observe what value? 0, 1 and 4. So only three value uh, y is observing under the map x square, a square function. So compute the protein mass function of uh, y at to 0, uh, y at 0, what would be protein that y is observing value 0? That means y is what? x square. Write it like this. x square equal to 0. Tell me what are the, how many solutions x square equal to 0 is having? One, one. Only one solution, 0. Among the integer you have to, a possible value of x you have to see the solution. Okay. So uh, it would be uh, what? Protein that x is observing value 0 and that protein is 1 by 5. You got it. Now suppose you are taking non-zero, uh, non-zero image of x. You are looking for non-zero image. So what is the property of y is equal to uh, small y? So it would be uh, what? Property that x square equal to a small x. So here y is not uh, variable. It is fixed, a small y. x square is uh, variable. So solve this one, x square. How many solution it is having? It is having two solution. One is minus a square root of y. Another one is a square root of y. Both will map to y. So this equation is having two solutions, x minus a square root of y plus a square root of y. So probability that y is observing value a small y, uh, it is what? And both are what? Minus a square root of y and plus a square root of y, both are mutually disjoint. So what is the probability that y is observing value a small y? It is sum of the proba this probability. And what is the probability of this one? 1 by 5. Probability of this one is 1 by 5. So it is coming as 2 by 5. Very simple to compute. There is no any issue, okay? So it is two. So all these are we will discuss it later. Okay. Other things we will discuss uh, next uh, joint protein mass function. What is meaning of joint? There are two things, both are coming together. So I think everyone might be very much familiar with function of one random variable. Uh, one variable. Function of one variable, everyone might be familiar with that. Okay. How you define function of two? Have you uh, anywhere seen function of two variable? Have you seen? Have you seen? Function of two variables. Have you seen or not? Not. Have you seen or not? A little bit revision I will give. So function of when you define function of uh, one variable, generally you define in real numbers. You are, you are taking function of one uh, variable, you say that A and B happens to be subset of real, set of real numbers R. Okay. And there you are defining function a to b. Relation, everyone might have heard relation. In set theory in high school you might have studied relation. Function is a special case of relation. Okay. So this one is function of one random variable. Okay. When you are dealing with only real numbers. Uh, a and b are subset of real number. What about function of two variables? 
and here in short you write it here f of x you say that uh, uh, in function of one variable you say that what is name of x what we call x x what we call again what we call x and y both are variable f is the first rule f is the rule Put. what is x what input if you are from computer science you can call it input and if you are from uh, like uh, other than computer science you can call it argument argument so better name is argument you can call it argument and uh, arg in mathematics generally people are calling it argument arg argue arg i am writing argument uh, what is y if you are from again computer science you will call it output and if you are from other than computer science what you will call what output for uh, computer perspective input and output kind of things you are saying there uh, if you are from other than computer science what you will call it result uh, try to be exactly uh, result is uh, yeah that you can say but uh, uh, that one is very general sense try to be in uh, function what we call it response response with respect to argument you are getting response so you can call it response this one is regarding function of one variable okay what about function of two variable function of two variable again you say that y equal to f of having more than one argument we will call it having two argument x1 comma x2 having two argu argument why there is a need of two argument suppose one doctor is visiting in this campus and willing to uh, uh, check your or uh, investigate your health whether doctor will take only one argument that he will ask just tell me how you are feeling how you let's describe how you are feeling so you will describe uh, i am feeling fine or i'm not feeling fine so that is simply binary decision would be there feeling fine or not fine like that then he will ask if you are feeling not fine you, if you are feeling fine just okay go and now if you are not feeling fine then what doctor next uh, doctor will ask then ask uh, whether you are having pain in body or some uh, some kind of sneezing or something like that uh, other kind of thing so various various argument will come there that, that term now it is one argument uh, once one argument feeling uh, fine or not fine once you are answering feeling fine go not feeling fine that argument argument will change it will be not a single argument various various things would be there various things so one argument it is not going to work various things you then if you are having uh, further many other uh, issue what uh, first doctor will say that go and check your weight what is your height weight initially have you seen there in the health campus a height uh, weight machine is there height component is there uh, then doctor will ask to come up with those data if you are unable to identify your problem unable to go come up with height and weight then uh, he will ask several things he or she will ask several things so various argument simply various argument will come there uh, based on uh, input of uh, value of those argument do doctor will decide uh, you are having you may have that kind of things that kind of uh, problem or that kind of problem okay and then he will suggest he or she will suggest some medicines based on that so if you are want to evaluate uh, your health uh, status you need not a single argument you need multiple argument you have to uh, 
provide multiple argument. So that's where there is a function of several variable will come here. Function of two variable or more than two variable will come there. Function of two variable simply. So here simply uh, here you are having more than one variable. More than one variable, two variable, three variable kind of things. So these are very much so this we call it function of uh, uh, several variable, simply you can call it. There is a book in the uh, library, Thomas and Finney, you can follow that little bit. It is just generalized from function of one variable and it won't, uh, right now we will not go rigorously function of several variable. So joint, uh, here we are dealing with probability mass function. So here we will have more than two, two or more than two random variables in at the same, in the same experiment we will define. So just I am taking that kind of example. Joint discrete random variable and then we will come up with joint probability mass function of those. Joint means occurs together occurs like uh, some doctor is asking uh, uh, trying to uh, know your health status he will not inquire from others regarding your, your health status he will inquire from you yourself okay that means your sample species are fixed random experiments is fixed and there we try to come up with various variable various argument we try to come up with various argument it is not like that the doctor will ask from others to know about your health that one is different thing, okay. That, that one if your extreme cases are there. So here same experiment. So as we have seen the concept of discrete variable as a map uh, from omega to a countable set, omega x via this map and the inverse map of Borel set in the uh, sigma algebra of omega that we had already seen that. Now, however, in some situation or instances, you would like to measure multiple attribute. Attribute, another name of argument, we can call it attribute. Multiple attribute of the outcome in a random experiment. So like in a disease risk assessment of a college student from population, a physician might wish to know his or her height, weight, blood pressure, pulse rate, all these things. So here, uh, with respect to height, you are having one random variable. With respect to weight, you are having another random variable. With respect to blood pressure, you are having another random variable. With respect to pulse, you are having another random variable. So, uh, if you talk about uh, risk, uh, disease risk assessment, all tho those four or five things should come together, come jointly in order to access uh, disease risk assessment. Those have to be, doctor have to uh, evaluate those things in together, have to uh, study those things in together. It is not like that separately it will go. So have to uh, evaluate those things in together. So joint occurrence of those random variable will come there. So risk is a function of height, weight, blood pressure, pulse and various other things also. So these are nominal things, others will come later. So here it is a function of several variable is coming. Risk is a function. Here, each om here what is happening that here omega is what? It is not a single thing. It is a composite thing. It is made from four different component. Composite thing, four different component. So that's why omega is a little bit complicated. So if that kind of thing is there, there, then we have to simply first what we, uh, we have to do, go with pairwise for simplicity. Like uh, people are willing to decide uh, uh, selection of uh, basketball player. So what kind, uh, what kind of people will be, uh, what component uh, a coach will go for that? What, uh, what measurement coach have to take in order to decide uh, player at the first, first instance? What would be that? In basketball player, height would be longer, little bit longer height and weight it is not of large weight, okay. So height and weight, moderate weight and height would be little bit longer, something like that. So there have to take measurement of, so there are two variables in order to decide a uh, basketball player, coach will look for two argument, height and weight. And then based on that, uh, the coach will decide. Is it right or have you seen such kind of scenario or not? So like like that and if you are going for other things so here if you talk about an outcome would be selection of a player selection of a player okay 
Uh, so, so you have to select a player. So one or student will come there. Uh, that uh, coach will ask what is your height and what is your weight. So height and weight both are coming together in order to decide the selection, selection of the player. Both are coming together. It is not like that height will take separately or weight will take separately. Whether it is have, you are going that way, then you will not get a good player for basketball. You will not get. Like someone will just giving attention to height, then what will happen? One healthier person with longer height may be selected and he may be not a good basketball player. Okay, that kind of that kind of situation. Many other situations, some odd uh, outlier kind of selection might be there. So you have to take height and weight together in there. Okay, uh, if you are going to appear for uh, your campus selection, what uh, interviewer will look into you? What uh, tell me? What interviewer will look into you? First would be CGP. Whether you are satisfying your CGP. Uh, you are maintaining CGP that uh, uh, whether your CGP is greater than the threshold value or not. First CGP, then second subject knowledge which is needed there in the uh, company. Third, your communication whether you are able to communicate or not. And fourth, various other things are there. Various other things. So, so it is not like that with one ability that interviewer will select you. It is not like that. So there interviewer have to look for all possible things, all possible which are coming, it is not uh, like uh, everything he will look, uh, uh, but which are coming as a certain number of attribute. He will come up with a certain number of attribute that this, I will check for this attribute. So those will come there. So this would be finite number, not generally infinite number, it's finite number. Okay, like 10 attribute, or 5 attribute, 15 attribute, like that. Okay, so you have to know all those attributes. And those attributes occur jointly. That means together in the same time those are occurring in the same experiment. Are you getting meaning of joint or not? That means in the same experiment occurring at the same time. Okay. In order to decide some selection, some kind of selection or some kind of something uh, that uh, some kind of response, some kind of Y value would be. Okay. So that kind of situation is coming here. So here uh, joint. Uh, discrete random variable will discuss and here one situation is like that you can say that uh, here height and weight are taken and here probability is defined. So each point is having probability. Each point is height is height in the uh, 2D height is the, uh, defined along vertical uh, axis and that one is talking about probability of observing those points. What is the probability of observing those points? So this is the depiction of uh, joint probability mass function of two attributes, height and weight. Two attributes, you can go for mo more than that. Okay. So how you will define joint probability of uh, height and weight? So this one is height and weight coming together. So it is joint probability. What is the probability that H is observing value HI and comma is talking about and. This one is what? And joint occurrence. So we are computing and uh, weight is observing value uh, a small wj. So this one is n. You will read it comma here n. So joint occurrence of height and weight. You will compute like this way. So it is actually, it is if it is given then uh, you can easily describe joint probability mass function. But if I ask that in a experiment just go and compute joint probability of a joint outcome, it would be very tedious task. Later you will come to compute it through multiplication rule. I will discuss in later. So here, uh, two. What is meaning of uh, uh, joint random variable in two cases? So two discrete random variable that are defined in the same sample space omega. We call it x. That one is taking value x1, x2 up to xn. That means these are coming in omega x. M number of value in omega x, and we are having another random variable y in the same random experiment or defining the sa over same sample space and y is observing value y1, y2 up to yn. We call it omega y. And we say that these two are jointly distributed across together. Jointly distributed means across together. And then if that is the scenario, then we are having order pair xy. Order pair xy where xy will take value 
how many value x y take, will take if x is taking value n number of value y is taking n number of value then how how much how many value x order pair x y will take m into n matrices kind of matrices we have already seen one along column another along uh, row so that kind of variation so the order pair x y takes value how many value uh, m into n value so these value are observed value of order pair x y so this one it occurs jointly joint word is very much essential here so we have to compute the probability mass function for each joint point x comma y a small x comma a small y so joint point would be that it would be the joint outcome x is observing value x uh, a small x i y is observing value a small y j okay so the joint probability mass function at the joint point it is defined as probability is that x is observing value a small x i and y is observing value a small y j and it is satisfying two property first property that simply it is a probability it is defined in term of capital p so that one is a probability measure so by default it should take value between 0 and 1 because it is a probability it should take value 0 between 0 and 1 second sum of the probability must be equal to 1 normalizing property so how summation would be there it would be double summation why because there are two variables two argument x and y so sum with respect to x and sum with respect to y so double summation it is all about double summation and uh, uh, later you have to compute the probability of an event by using this formula okay so simplest example i have taken it uh, consider uh, toss of two coin that that are weighted weighted means uh, probability of success is not 0.5 it is, it would be less than or greater than 0.5 so weighted toss uh, weighted coin and both are independent to each other if independent to each other it is very easy to compute joint probability what would be joint probability it is product of individual probability in case of independent uh, event that we have already discussed in independent event no independent or dependent what is the probability of a intersection b when a and b are independent probability of a into probability of b so that that thing we have already discussed so here here coin if you are taking two different coin by default happen to be independent to each other so here that scenario is, so if you are willing to compute joint probability of x and y it would be what uh, first uh, talk about x is random variable that uh, talk counting number of head is the first toss y is random variable counting number of head is the second toss so x is observing value how many value 0 and 1 y is observing value 0 and 1 so uh, tell me how many value uh, the order pair x y will observe how many value order pair x y will observe four value observe two into two four value so you have to compute four joint probability mass function what is the joint probability mass function when x is equal to zero and y equal to zero x equal to zero means failure in the first toss y equal to zero means failure in the second toss so what is the probability of failure one minus p so one minus p uh, okay two times it is coming so 1 minus p plus y now x equal to 0 failure in the first of so it is very simple to compute through uh, independent rule you can easily compute it like that and uh, so you can see the mapping here these are the outcome in omega which is here uh, you can say that tt is mapped to 0 ht is mapped to 1 ts is mapped to 1 hs is mapped to uh, hs is mapped to 1 1 this this point you call it this point uh, tt is mapped to 0 uh, th is mapped to uh, 0 1 ht is mapped to 1 0 so this mapping you can see in uh, this one is this one is what r2 this one is omega cross omega okay so if you try to see further like that uh, x is observed value m value y is observing n value so these are the probability of points so tell me what is the if you sum all these probability what is the sum where would be that so then in the matrix table you come up with extra column and extra row okay so where would be one one would be here it would be one.
sum of all these probability would be here. Okay. Now, once you are having uh, joint distribution, from joint distribution you can compute marginal distribution. So, how you will compute marginal distribution? Uh, marginal distribution means uh, you are marginalizing, that means you are having joint uh, random variable x and y, from there you try to come up with to compute probability mass function of x and y is uh, x y uh, by marginalizing. What does it mean? That means what is the probability of x? Uh, uh, it is defined as like probability that x is observed value a small x and if you are saying like this way, tell me uh, in a 2D plot what is meaning of a small x equal to x, x is taking value along horizontal axis. So once we are saying that x is equal to a small x, so x is observed value a small x, what does it talk about? What does it, tell me what does it represent? A small, uh, a small x, what does it represent? In 2D, in 1D, a small x represents a point, a single number. If you take a number along a line, if you take a, a small x, it is a fixed number, so it is talking about a point. If I am taking a small x, you are fixing x, and it is a 2D variable, variable in R2, then R cross R, variable in R cross R. Tell me how many points you observe here, one point or many points. How many points do you observe? Actually you observe infinitely many points. You observe here y, you are not putting any condition over y. You have fixed x, then y will vary now. Y will vary. So you will say that here uh, probability that x is, because here you are having joint variable. So uh, what is the probability that x is a small x? So here means y is free to take any value, y is free. So, so it, y will not take any value, y will take value from omega y, omega y. So here this property is equal to property that x is observing value a small x and y is observing value from omega y, all possible value of y. So because y is free, we are not putting any, any condition over y. So if you are saying that like that, so what does it mean? Uh, it is having many points now. So one point would be here, one, another point would be here, another point would be here. For all these value, x is fixed value, x is same value. So if you are willing to compute probability of x equal to x, so it will have various inverse images now. It will have various inverse images. What are those points? So there are various points you observe along this line. Along this, one point is this one, another point is this. So you have to sum this probability in order to get probability of observing x. You have to sum. So summation would be with respect to what? Summation with respect to all possible y. You have to sum the probability with respect to all possible y. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Here you are fixing x equal to a small x. That means here you have observed a value of x. You are not talking about y y will take various possible value now. So if you, y is taking various possible value, then with respect to those point, each point will have probability, x comma y, y is varying. So x comma y, so there are various points now, these points are coming. So here fixing y, so if you are willing to compute the probability of x, so you have to sum the joint probability, this joint probability along the line. So x equal to a small x is not a, point here what is it it is a line in 2d in r2 in a plane if you are someone is saying that uh, this one is y x equal to a small x it is a line it is not a point in 2d x equal to a small x is a line not a point in in that line there are various points you observe these are the various points so if you are willing to compute probability that x is observing value a small x then you have to sum all the joint probability along the line, along the line. How many joint probability you will observe? Sum for all those probability. So that's where summation of joint probability, summation of joint probability along the line. We are not 
summing all the probabilities sum is only with respect to y y x is fixed here y is free to vary y is free to vary we are not putting any condition over y so we are exhausting y from the uh, from the joint points along the line on the, along the line x equal to small x so that is the meaning of in 2d that when you are fixing one coordinate now suppose i am giving you uh, you are in a plane i am saying that uh, you walk at x equal to 1 what you will do you walk like uh, 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 give a coordinate frame like this so 1 uh, 2 and this i am saying 3 this along this uh, uh, call it x uh, this one along y so i am saying that walk along x equal to 3 what you will do what you you will walk through this way here all along all these uh, points in this line x is equal to 3 but y is very here we haven't give put any bound over y y is very so you will walk along so there are many points there so if i am saying that compute the probability of x equal to 3 that you have to compute the probability at x equal to uh, 3 comma 0 x equal to 3 comma 1 x equal to 3 comma 2 like that all all those points and sum it up and that is the probability of observing x equal to 3 that we call it in total probability theorem what we have done total probability theorem what we have done we have to compute the probability all the scenario for that event now so event is x equal to 3 and there are various scenarios you have to sum all this so can we say that this point and that point are mutually exclusive all are different now but all are coming all are having x equal to 3 all points in the, all these points are having common thing x equal to 3 so you have to sum the probability for all those points on the line x equal to 3 so x equal to 3 in 2d it is a line not a point in 1d x equal to 3 is a point but in 2d 2D means plane. In a plane, x equal to 3 is talking about a lie. So we have to sum all the probability. So we have sum all these. Okay. So that means we are summing all the joint probability along the line x equal to 3. That means all, for all possible values. So this will give our marginal probability mass function of x. Okay. Here it is probability mass function of x. Likewise, you will get marginal probability mass function of y that means you take a value of y when you say that y is observing value of small y and x is free to take value then what does it mean you are moving parallel to horizontal axis y, that means x is taking all possible value you are just fixing y that means you are getting a line parallel to horizontal axis that means there are many points on the line you have to sum all these probability along the line all the joint probability along the line then you will get marginal probability mass function of y this is the way to compute marginal probability mass function so geometry you can see it here like this way so here all these x and y are discrete random variables so these are taking discrete value not continuous value discrete value so you, when you say x3 x3 is talking about joint probability sum of joint probability along the line x3 all these points will come there and likewise y3 if you are killing saying that uh, fixing y3 probability along this along this okay so one example is coming here like this uh, uh, here consider again two coin toss one coin is having probability of success 3 by 4 another coin is having probability of success 5 by 8 what does it mean both coin are weighted or bias coin and we can easily compute probability joint probability of this coin two coin tosses easily we can compute it is a very simple exercise so what is the probability so when x equal to 0 y equal to 0 both coin, if you are talking about two coin both coin are independent by default whether if you take two coin and you toss it like that so tossing of one coin, one coin whether it is going to affect the tossing of another coin it will not affect if it is not affecting tossing of one coin to another then simply we will say that both are independent 
if both are independent, then it is very easy to compute joint probability, joint probability of joint outcome. What we do that? Product of the corresponding outcome. Product. So what is the probability of x equal to 0 and y equal to 0? Probability of x equal to 0 into probability of y equal to 0. What is the probability of x equal to 0? What is the probability of x equal to 0? 1 by 4. 3 by 4 is the probability of success. So in first point. So 1 by 4. What is the probability of y equal to 0? It would be uh, 3 by 8. Three in, in se for second point P2 is 3 by 8. No? No, 5 by 8. So probability of that one is probability of success. What is the probability of failure? 1 minus 5 by 8. 3 by 8. So, so if you multiply all these, you will get 1 by 8, something like that. Okay, joint probability. Like probability of x equal to 0 and y equal to 0, it is 1 by 8. Probability of x equal to 1 and y equal to 0, it is 1 by 4. Probability of x equal to 1 and y equal to 1, uh, it would be 1 by 2. Simplify it all, then you will get this probability. These, these are the joint probability. There are four possible values. That's why you got four possible joint probability. Now, once you are having joint probability, how you can marginalize it? How you can marginalize? So you have to compute probability of x. What is meaning of probability of x? How you will get? Sum the probabilities along the line x equal to small x by varying all possible y. So how many value y is observing? Just two value. Y is observing just two value now. So what is the probability of x equal to 0? What is the probability, probability, marginal probability mass function at x equal to 0? That means you are saying that it is probability that the random variable x is observed value a small x. So what will be this probability? How many value you observed here? Uh, if you are fixing uh, here, take it like this. Uh, this one is 0, this one is 1 along horizontal axis, x is object value. Here don't put it capital, a small letter here, put it capital. Along this, you are taking y. y is also object value 0 and 1. So if that if x equal to this line, it is talking about x equal to zero. What is the probability x equal to zero? What how many point joint point you will observe? One joint point is this one zero zero. Another joint point is what is another joint point is zero one. Another joint point is zero one. Uh, do you observe any other value of y when x equal to zero? You don't. Only just these two joint points. So it would be sum of sum of joint probability of zero zero and zero one. What is the probability of zero zero? What is the probability of zero zero? It is given there and probability of zero uh, one. What is the probability of zero zero? It is one by eight. And what is the probability of zero one? It is one by eight. So it would be 2 by 8. So 2 by 8 simplify it, it would be 1 by 4. So what is the probability of x equal to 0? 1 by 4. Likewise, what is the probability of x equal to 1? When you talk about x equal to 1, how many joint point you will observe? 1, 0 and 1, 1. What is the probability of 1, 0? 1 by 4. What is the probability of 1, 1? 1 by 2. What is the sum of 1 by uh, 4 and 1 by 2, it is 3 by 4. So th that's why you got this 3 by 4. Likewise, what is the probability of uh, y equal to 0 and y equal to 1? What, what is the probability of y equal to 0? What is the probability? y equal to 0, that means y is fixed. That means what point you will observe? 0, comma. 0 and 0 comma 1 so 0 comma so 0 comma 0 1 by 8 and 0 comma 1 sorry 0 we are actually used to of writing uh, any order pair like x comma y 
y is coming second so i am saying that when y equal to 0 so i am asking 0 comma 0 and 0 co 1 comma 0 one, i am talking about 1 comma 0 so 1 comma 0 this point so 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4 it would be 3 by 8 likewise what is the probability the of when y equal to 1 that means you are talking about uh, y equal to 1 means 0 comma 1 and 1 comma 1 so what is that probability that will be 5 by 8 so actually we are used to of writing x comma y so y is coming later x is coming first uh, it is our tradition so this way you are computing marginal probability of the random variable x and y from given joint probability so right now there is no issue that uh, this would be simple example to compute joint probability mass function it would be just due to independent nature we can easily compute joint probability mass function but in it is not always true so what is happening that uh, if it is not always possible to compute joint property mass function of a random variable, then what we have to do? Then what we have to do? We have to go for conditioning approach. Conditional, conditional property everyone might have already heard. So conditional property, conditioning is giving opportunity to compute joint probability. So we had already seen that. So here, how we compute joint probability of occurrence of two events A and B. This also you call it multiplication rule as well. How we compute it? Well, one would be very easy to, there, if there are joint event, uh, then one would be very easy to deal with. One would be, it depends upon your, which one you find easy, proceed with that. Suppose you are, Finding A is very easy to compute, then compute the probability of A. Okay. And if you have already computed probability of A, that means you know about A. So then you will compute probability of B given A. So this is the way to compute joint probability of two event A and B. Now replace the event A by like in term of random variable call it x is observed value a small x okay we are saying that a is coming with respect to random variable x now y call it b is coming with respect to random variable y another random variable not x but from the same experiment this okay so what kind of pattern it will take if i am saying that a intersection b it is in set theory approach okay so we have translated event a and b in term of random variable x and y so what is A? Equivalently we will write A is what? Defined by X is observing value a small x and B is defined as for how? Where is here intersection? How? Where intersection went? X is a small observing value a small x. It is a number. Y is observing value a small y. That one is also number. Within the number, do you see any intersection operation? In the number, do you see any inter intersection operation? Here intersection it will be joint occurrence. It is order pair, odd ring. So that uh, x equal to a small x and y equal to a small y. That means intersection has been replaced by and. What is intersection here? And x is observing value a small x and y is observing value a small y. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Okay. So here intersection is replaced by comma and we read it and a small y. Okay. Now you are willing to compute joint probability. Someone is saying that I have observed A first. Fine. So if you have observed A first, so what will come here? Probability of A. What is A? A is actually defined by x is as a volume, a 
small x. Okay. And what is B given a? What is B given a? What is B given a? So directly you will write here. B given a means B is what? Y is observing value. A small y. Condition on A. A is what? X is observing value. A small x. I think till now it might be clear to everyone x equal to a small x you will read it x is observing a small x y equal to a small y means y is observing value a small y observing value so that so this now can you write in term of protein mass function how will write this one how will write this can we write it can we say that it is what it is the value of Probability mass function of random variable x at point a small x, the observed value of small x. Once you say a small x, it is observed. And what is this one, this quantity? What is this quantity? You are getting a new quantity. Actually, it is a conditional probability expressed in term of random variable. So, it is a Conditional probability mass function. Conditional probability mass function of y given x. So here we will introduce here a small p a small p. Probability mass function would be always in a small letter. Y Suffix would be what? Y given x. Again, we will put here given means vertical line. We are putting vertical line. Okay, not slant line. Vertical line. We are putting vertical line. Y given x of how will write it here? Argument y. And here you can put it here given x is observed value small x or simply a small x you can write it but here this is the notation. Notation is little bit cumbersome notation but you have to understand meaning of all these notation. So it is given thing first we have observed this value of x. And then we are defining probability mass function of y. So this we call it. And you, if you understand it, if you understand it, so then it is already implied from here. So you can put it here a small x. There is no issue. So this we call it conditional probability mass function. Conditional probability mass function. Conditional PMF. So you took you have to talk about definition of conditional PM. What is definitional of conditional PM? What is the definition? Take this one uh, left hand side and what would be this? Uh, what is the notation of uh, what is the notation of this uh, you had seen what is the notation of this it is talking about joint occurrence of x and y with joint point x comma y so you can call it x comma y at joint point x a small x comma a small y all these are notation meaningful notation you should not leave any suffix or any argument kind of thing you should not leave so from here what you are getting it i think next slide i might have defined uh, here you, you are getting it like that so 
conditional probability mass function actually I define in a reverse way conditional probability mass function of x given y I have defined here. So, what is the conditional probability ma mass function of x given y how you define it? So, what you do? It is talking about conditional probability mass function of x is observed a small x given y. So, when you say that this a small y that means y equal to a small y is given to you a small y you have already observed. So, this one is conditional probability mass function is defined like this way and it is further expressed like this way. Conditional probability in term of event, this one is one event you can call it A, this event is B, so probability of A given B, it is defined as A is what? X is your value small x and B is what? Y is your value small y. So, how you will talk, how you define conditional probability mass function, uh, conditional probability of uh, event A given B, you define as how much A is happening in joint with B. So, probability of A intersection B divided by or normalized by probability of observing B, probability of observing B. This definition you have already, this call it A, this call it B, okay. So, this one is probability of A intersection B, this one is probability of B. How you are computing probability of B? Through total law of probability, total law of probability that, that you have already seen. So, uh, what is the conditional probability ma mass function of x given y? Here this one is very a specific notation, it is for conditional random variable x given y. That means you have already observed y, you are trying to compute probability of x in the scenario of observed y. Okay. It is defined as ratio of joint probability mass function, ratio of joint probability mass function of x and y divided by marginal probability mass function of y, y. Value of it is coming with respect to marginal probability mass function, marginal PM, PM, okay. It is coming with respect to joint probability mass function, joint PM. Actually, uh, here you have to visualize this event, joint event, how does it look like. So, uh, from here it will give idea to compute joint probability mass function with the help of conditional probability mass function. So, if you are willing to compute joint probability mass function of x and y, what is this one? First you observe y, once you have already observed y, then observe x conditionally, observe x conditionally and if you are observing of x conditionally then you have to compute conditional probability mass function. So, it is again in the line of conditional probability mass function, only difference is that all these are defined in term of random variable and regarding event in the random variable I had already explained a lot, okay. Any question here till now? Any question? So, here all about that when someone is saying x equal to small x, it is a line, when it, this one is a line, uh, x equal to a small x, it is no more a point. When you are saying uh, y equal to a small y, it is a horizontal line. As equal to a small x, it is a vertical line and x equal to a small x horizontal line and the joint point is what? It is a point of intersection of x equal to a small x line, it is uh, intersection of the two line x equal to a small x and y equal to a small x and this point we call it joint point, we call it x is of the value a small x. And y is of the value a small y. So, in the next class, we will discuss various application of conditional probability mass function. In the same scenario, what we had discussed, uh, how many things we had discussed in module 1? How many things we had discussed in module 1 regarding conditional probability? Tell me those things. How many things we had discussed? First, we had discussed multiplication rule. Then same here multiplication rule 4, probability mass function will come here. Multiplication rule we had discussed, 
मल्टीप्लीकेशन रूल विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू कंडीशनल प्रॉपर्टी दैट मीन्स कंप्यूटिंग ज्वाइंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी हाउ यू आर कंप्यूटिंग ज्वाइंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी ए एंड बी आर एक्चुअली नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट इवेंट डिपेंडेंट सो ज्वाइंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए इंटू प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ बी गिवन ए और प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ बी इंटू प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ए गिवन बी विच एवर यू सी फर्स्ट ओके सो दैट वन इज टर्निंग एज मल्टीप्लेशन रूल देन वॉट वी हैड सीन नेक्स्ट एनी वन मे रिकॉल आफ्टर मल्टीप्लेशन रूल वट वी हैड सीन आफ्टर मल्टीप्लेशन रूल वट वी हैड सीन इन कंडीशन एज ए एप्लीकेशन ऑफ कंडीशनल प्रॉपर्टी रिकॉल द लेक्चर partition of sample of space so we had done partition of sample of space in order to in order to what in order to compute total probability so you have to compute total probability so your total probability will come here total probability what is total probability this we are computing probability along a line that means we are introducing marginalization that means of fixing x and Exhausting y. That means there are y is free to vary along the line. That means we are summing the probability for all possible y along the fixed line. Fixed line when x is equal to x or small x, it is giving a line. So we are summing for and vice versa also. If y equal to small y, then we have fixed y. That means we are getting a line where x is free to vary. That means we are getting various joint points in order to compute probability of y equal to small y. that value of probability mass function at y that means you have to sum for all x on the line y equal to small y this is the line when you are saying y equal to small y it is a line horizontal line when you are saying a small x capital x equal to small x it is a vertical line because here two things varying together so it is no more a point it is a line in 2d that is the meaning of 2d variable Two, d, two dimensional variable. That means you are getting, you are fixing a value. That means you are getting a line. Okay. So what was the third application? Anyone? Third application of conditional probability. What was the third application? Recall what what was the third application of conditional probability? What was the last lecture of uh, module one? Bayes rule. It was Bayes rule. So third application of conditional probability mass function is Bayes rule. So in the next class, we will discuss all these, and that means we will finish discrete probability mass function, and I will start continuous random variable. and the corresponding distribution will be characterized by probability density function why because you know that when you are having a continuous body if you are taking a solid body so it is always characterized by a density not a point wise description are there it is it is having a density we call it density so likewise we are uh, here we are interested to compute probability so here we correspondingly we will have the probability density function so density in continuous case we will talk about probability density function okay any question i think uh, this lecture might be little bit uh, uh, difficult